Previously, my journey began in the provincial capital of Fuzhou, where along with Jesse Enkamp, I explored the arts of whooping crane fist, incense shop boxing, and dog boxing, the most popular styles practiced in the area today. From there, we headed to the historic city of Quanzhou to visit the reconstructed Southern Shaolin Temple, and took a deep dive into the origins of the mythology of the temple in the folklore of the Triad organizations. We then explored the arts of Wuzhu Quan and Taizu Quan and learnt about their impact on other Fujian styles. To finish this journey, we will visit the rural county of Yongchun, about an hour outside of Quanzhou. Before heading back to Fuzhou to spend some more time with Masters Yu Danqiu and Lin Shanquan. Yongchun is the homeland of White Crane Kung Fu. It's the place where, according to legend, the founder Fang Qinyan settled down with her husband and began to teach her newly created art. The name Yongchun means eternal spring, and in the local dialect of Hokkien, would be pronounced Ungchun. Or in Cantonese would be Wen Chun. If you think that sounds familiar, then you aren't mistaken. The art of Wing Chun, made popular in Hong Kong by Yip Man, shares almost the same characters. The only difference is that Wing adds an extra radical, changing the meaning from eternal to chant. Alright, so today we're here in Yongchun County, which is the birthplace and the home of white crane kung fu and so all the other styles of crane that you see have come from Yongchun County from where we are now and they say also that as Wing Chun was supposed to have also come from crane so theoretically this would also be the birthplace of Wing Chun in fact the name Yongchun is just the Mandarin pronunciation of Wing Chun although the characters used are a little bit different but the sign here behind me actually says the first village of Wing Chun in China. The first place we visited was a large ancestral shrine built both to venerate the founder, Fang Qinyan, and to serve as a museum documenting the style's history and development, as well as hold regular performances for the community. As Master Zhang Xiaofeng told us in Quanzhou, the art of White Crane was supposedly founded when a lady by the name of Fang Qinyan learned Taizu Quan from her father, but was later inspired after witnessing a crane fighting a snake to soften the art to mimic the graceful nature of the bird. Does this story sound familiar to the Wing Chun creation myth popularized by Yip Man? I was certainly curious if there was any direct connection between Wing Chun and Yong Chun White Crane. The names are very similar, the creation story has some definite overlaps too. But how about technical similarities? Well Alex Xu joined up with us to take us to visit the three top masters of the county. Our first stop was Master Zheng Qingyong, who lives in Dayu village on the top of a mountain. Alright, so we've just arrived at the home of Master Zheng Qingyong, who's one of the top masters of Yongchun White Crane in the area, and he's got this this nice house which is up on the top of a mountain with an absolutely stunning view behind behind just down here you can see and there's the old like an old home about over a hundred years old and then you can see the tea plantations and the woods all in the mountains and then, so he doesn't actually run a school he just teaches from he just teaches at his home here so his students come and they just train out in this courtyard They've got all these uh, weights and stone locks and things. So we're going to go in, have some tea, and learn a bit about his white crane. After sitting down for some tea, he took us outside to show us the basic form of White Crane, Sanjan. This form means three battles and involves taking three steps forward while doing three hand techniques and then three steps back.
Afterwards, he invited me to practice jisho with him, which is the white crane version of sticky hands. In contrary to my habit of rotating the body on its axis as we do in northern styles, Master Jung always kept his centre line facing me, while keeping my centre line away from his. Practitioners of Wing Chun will surely know that this is one of the foundational concepts of the style. This isn't unique to Wing Chun or White Crane though. You'll find the concept of centre line in most Chinese martial arts, although they're not always manifested in the same way. From there, we headed back into town to visit the Wung Gong Tzu, the oldest continuously running martial arts group in the area. The headmaster, Pan Cheng Miao, had recently passed away, and his son, Pan Chong Chi, has now taken over the running of the school. He was incredibly welcoming, and spent time showing us many of the old photos and artifacts around the school, explaining with great pride the legacy of his father and grandfather. He also explained some more about the style and its training methods to us. Yeah. Yeah, 走中前进去。不是在往上前进。你的你的你的腰腰力,呃,你你的全是从上往下的多。我们也有一个稍微一个动作是往上,就比如说你看,哦,过来,这样,这样下去。啊,这样过来。这样这样下去。两个人,在你
So this is like the internal power here from his arm. Contemplating what I saw in Yongchun County, I could see many crossovers in technique between Yongchun White Crane and Wing Chun. From the aforementioned idea of centerline and footwork to many of the hand shapes, it seemed that there was indeed a technical connection as well as a cultural one. How exactly the arts are connected though is difficult to say due to the limited resources on the early history of Wing Chun. This could be a topic for future exploration in Guangdong and Hong Kong. Leaving Yongchun, we returned to where we started in Fuzhou to spend more time with Master Yu Danqiu and Lin Shanqiu. Master Yu wanted to take us to the Crane's Nest Temple, which sits atop a mountain overlooking the city. So Master Yu Danqiu has taken us up to the Crane Temple, which is on a hill just outside of uh, Fuzhou city. And it's in this temple where Ming Chen or Crying Crane, which is a style he practices, was founded. It, it's a story, yeah. mm. story of, of, uh, of this temple. Mm. Yeah. He say something about his connect with the Kalate, Gan, Ganju Liu. Ganju Liu. No? Yeah. Mm. Ganju Liu here. Ganju Liu. Mm. Oh, Ganju Liu. Ganju Liu. Ganju uh, Ping. Ganju Ping means uh, uh, 就是发源地,他的祖宗的,他是源头 So the, the founder of Goju Ryu learned yeah. crane style in this temple It's like mm. yes. He chose this place to teach Jesse Babu Lian the first form of the whooping crane system which is basically a version of Sanjan and is what Higayono Kanryo was said to have learned here before taking it back to Okinawa and teaching Chojun Miyagi Founder of Goju Ryu Karate. He Chao Si, so it's the Crane's Nest Temple. Ah, its a lot of its 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 been renovated heavily, but the layout of it is based on the original Tang Dynasty design. Mm. Yeah, because you can see it's a lot more simple looking than a lot of the newer temples. Mm. So normally you shouldn't really film inside uh, Buddhist shrines, but we've been told that we're allowed to, so I'll just show you. Along the side you've got the 18, the 18 Luohan, along either side, so uh, the Luohan are like really, really important in figures in Chinese martial arts. They're like the early, I guess, like the early disciples of Buddha or some people that attained enlightenment quite early on. And then here at the at the side, here you've got Dharma or Bodhidharma, the sort of mythic, mythical founder of Shaolin Kung Fu. In the middle is in the middle is the Buddha and this yeah these are the other Lohan behind me and this person here is a Taoist god because I said this is Tao this temple is Taoist and Buddhist together so this person here is the White Crane spirit so he's supposed to be the, the spiritual ancestor of crane style. The, the myth goes that Fang Qinyang, the lady that created crane style, that she got divine inspiration from, from this god here. Mm. 
放在这个牌的位置。是永春。啊，永春，永春 ，Yeah， it's like a forever. Oh, 永春啊、uh, ，it's not 春 ，not 永春的春。Oh, look, can you see the crane? Ah, on the stone. So this is. 它是还原了一些过去，就是更真实。它是有过去那个一千多年，一千多年，然后文化革命革命的时候有被毁掉一点。Oh, so there was a crane. This is this is redone in concrete, but. A thousand, for a thousand years, there was a crane on here, but it was smashed off in the Cultural Revolution. Yeah. So the stone's been here for a thousand years. A pig. A lion. Oh, this this also a thousand year old lion that was destroyed in the Cultural Revolution. So they've they've tried to redo it with concrete, and it became a pig. Yeah. 有点像猪. Yeah, it does. So it has healed up to the ancient times. Um, they just re they just did it themselves. That's why they just tried to fix it up themselves. Hmm. 所以这些鸟是告诉我们，原来是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们是鸟，它们
has a huge influence on how styles develop. And as to my initial question of the influence of Shaolin on Southern Kung Fu, well, it seems that while there is no ascertainable connection via lineage or similarity in technique, the legacy of Shaolin here is very strong, but in the form of a distinct folklore which has evolved in response to the politics of the last couple of centuries.